What is the future of cars? Toyota seems to think maybe we're going to go lighter, cheaper, uh, maybe focus less on fossil fuels. And they have a new addition to their line. Maybe it's not available yet, but it could be very soon. Let's take a look. What's really cool about this thing is that it's unlike anything I've ever driven. Not just the fact that it has three wheels, but what you have in front is what Toyota calls the active lean suspension. The two front wheels move independently of one another. So when you turn the steering wheel at high speed, the iRoad doesn't so much turn as it leans. You know, the way a skier carves down a mountain. For parking lot speeds, the back wheel does all the steering. So it's not so much like you're driving a car as you are a drifting one, or the way you move a speedboat. But you know, in a parking lot, in a thing that feels like you're in one third of a smart car. Toyota hasn't really decided if it wants to bring the iRoad to the US, or if it wants to keep it in Japan, or in Europe, or what any of that will look like. Right now, it's just a concept, and this is a prototype. But Toyota is pretty sure that the iRoad, or something like it, has a role to play in the future of transportation. Based on how fun this thing is to drive, and just how funky it is, I'm pretty happy to hear that. So this is dependent on a lot of factors, such as if hydrogen cells uh, are become the dominant uh, fuel system, um, and if it could work in maybe the U.S. Right now, uh, maybe not. It's, uh, it's less than three feet wide and just seven feet long. It uh, only weighs 600 pounds. That's less than some motorcycles. So it's very small. The top speed, by the way, is 37 miles per hour. So if you think you're going to get on the freeway with this, think again. That's the thing that really got me was the fact that it's only really meant to be driven locally. If it only mm -hmm. goes up to 37 miles per hour, it's not going to be practical for being your primary use car. Mm -hmm. And oh, of course not. I, I, I no. mean, <laughs> right. So there are already commercially available tiny cars and aren't meant to go more than like 10 miles out of your way. So I'm not sure what use people would actually have for this car. Maybe in Japan, where a lot of the transport, they already have a good public transportation system to get them farther, and then you want something to drive around locally that would work. But And then also, the fact that it, we, it's a commercially available drifting vehicle. I mean, drifting's not... I mean, it's not the safest way to, to turn the corner. I will tell you that, mm -hmm. Kim. I don't know. But okay, have you drifted? Not, Sounds like you, you Not have. on purpose, Kim. <laughs> not on purpose. All right. Well, it can be unsafe. Uh, I would also like to point out that it has about 30 miles it could travel before it needs to be charged. Charging takes about three hours. So yes, this is extremely uh, light level. And like the, uh, the reviewer, by the way, that comes from Wired.com, uh, mentioned in the video, uh, it would steer kind of like how a speedboat or a sailboat would in the back with the, that wheel pivoting quite a bit. And um, it's two seats, one behind the other. Um, according to the reviewer, though, the back seat looked like it couldn't be sat in comfortably by anyone except for a bag of potatoes, and it was also <laughs> very shaky. So, you know, take with this information what you will. Uh, it doesn't sound comparable to your everyday car. Um, I did show this to uh, resident tiny car enthusiast John Iderola, and he loved it. So I think it depends on your needs. Like, I could see um, maybe university campuses employing a fleet of these tiny things to get around the the campus at least, you know? Sure, for, but, for little local things. It could replace the golf cart. As, sure. It, well, you know, the golf cart has efficient. much more cargo space. That's, that's has true. very little cargo so space. So really, I see no use for it, then, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I When I think about the future of vehicles, even within the next 10 years, I, I predict that they will have self-driving cars. When mm -hmm. that happens, you're going to want to restructure the interiors of cars. It's going to be less about, about you needing to, like, sit forward in the in the driver's seat it's going to be more about you like lounging around and and working like on your laptop let's say you're like on a, a train a commuter train kind exactly of like that well i think it has its positives too i mean um yes we do have all of those negatives in check but it's you know it ha it's kind of like replacing maybe a small motorcycle or a small scooter in that uh, it's it steers about that and it's about that size, but it has familiar like steering mechanisms. You're in an enclosed area. Sure, but uh, motorcycles get up to the speeds where you can go on the freeway. Yeah, though. don't go on the freeway. This is this is for local use only. I would say. Um, 
they're speculating that the, the target audience would be maybe millennials, active seniors, uh, people who do not have a, you know, a vehicle and usually use public transportation as transit. So yeah, not for everyone for sure, but it, it does seem interesting. So they're hoping to introduce it to the Bay Area. Don't know if that's going to happen. Um, and this, by the way, this reviewer did use a prototype. So it was a little bit more, uh, the technical term would be janky than a regular vehicle. Uh, it had no handles for the doors. Instead, it had straps. Uh, it wasn't the most sturdy material. So safety is something that should definitely be considered. Erica looks like she is shocked and dismayed. <laughs> Di disapprove. That's what I would caption that with. Audience, what do you think of the iRoad? <laughs> I mean, Erica is pretty clear how she feels, but again, you know, you may have different opinions, and opinions even. Uh, so let us know those below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more.